Hello. So in this video, we're going to be talking about type 1 radicals and how to simplify them. Uh, so to be clear, this is going to be part one. I'm going to have a part two as well, obviously. Um, but mostly this distinction is because the stuff that we're going to go through in here um, is going to be the same sort of process for both even and odd roots. But even roots throw in a couple extra steps towards the end, and I'll make a comment when we get there, um, that is sort of difficult to explain without talking about the sort of reason we have these roots, meaning the sort of square root or even roots as an inverse function. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to talk about that inverse function business in order to explain the couple extra steps. So this video is going to go through how to simplify a type 1 sort of in general, and I will give a couple explicit examples with odd root values. Just know that uh, even root values, there's a couple extra steps I'll mention uh, toward the end of the solution process that we'll actually discuss in the next video. Okay. So just to sort of recall, uh, type 1 radicals are radicals uh, with one term. That is, i.e., uh, the radicand, the inside, is factored. Okay. So, again, the sort of easiest way to explain this is to sort of just do an example. Um, the basic guideline, though, and the reason why we did this uh, before, is that we're going to be following the same steps that we did when we did numeric uh, simplifying. It's just that here we're going to treat each algebraic factor, like x plus 1, as its own sort of prime factor. Okay, So let's do an example. So let's say we're going to take the third root of, let's do say x plus 1 to the fourth, x minus 1 squared, x plus 3 to the eighth. Okay, so pro tip, by the way, if you're writing this out with a handwriting, this is a great way of doing it. Put the symbol to the up, right, going up, write out everything, and then continue the symbol. That way you have it exactly the right length and height. Useful. <laughs> I speak from experience. All right, so just like when we did numerics, right, we have like 2 to the 4th, 3 squared, 5 to the 8th then we would group them as sort of the highest multiple of this root value and then some remainder. So I'm going to do basically the same thing here, and I'm going to try to use two distinct colors so you can see what's happening. Um, so again, this is equal to third root. So I'm going to have x plus 1 cubed. So this is the highest multiple of 3 that I can get out of 4, which leaves me with an x plus 1 to the first, All right? I don't technically have to write that. I'm just doing it to, to show what's happening. So right, three and one, that's the four. The x minus one, the highest multiple uh, of three is zero, meaning I can't actually get any of these pulled out. Um, so I have, in this case, just the remainder. So uh, x minus one squared. x plus 3 to the 8th, so the biggest multiple is 6, so I'm going to have x plus 3 to the 6th, which leaves me with the remainder, x plus 3 squared. Okay. So then I want to take this and I'm going to move uh, all of the multiples of 3 to the front and break it off as its own root. So I have, in particular, the third root of this piece, x plus 1 cubed, and that piece, x plus 3 to the sixth. So that's those two multiples that I have. So times third root. And then I have the remainder bits. So I have uh, x plus 1 to the 1 x minus 1 squared and x plus 3 
also squared. My two is a little lax there. Okay. And again, just like the numeric piece, that means I should be able to simplify this by looking at each base, right? So again, in the numeric version, this would be like two to the third and three to the sixth. The cube root, though, is going to uh, cut off, right, kill off a multiple of three here, meaning that I should take the power and divide it by that root in order to figure out what's left over. So three, this three divided by that three, I'm gonna get x plus one left over. Here, I will get x plus three to the power of six divided by three, so two times uh, third root. And all of this, all of this thing, everything stays the same on this side. So this is x plus one, x minus one squared, x plus three, also squared, and finish off my root symbol, okay? And this is it. Now I said I would make a mention where the even roots sort of change, and it's exactly at this step. So this is true, this, this is exactly the right answer, exactly the right process for an odd root. I'm gonna put a star here though, that, and you, if you're taking notes, you probably wanna do this in your notes as well. Um, extra step, if root value is even. Okay, so in the event that you have an even root value, there's another step that would sort of go between this step and that step in some, some way. Um, and again, that's something we'll cover in the next video because it requires a little bit more background before we can talk about it directly. Okay, all right, so let's do uh, one more example. Just, again, it'll be just like this. This is exactly the process um, and sort of all the way down to this level, it's the same whether it's even or odd. It's just going from here to the next step. Uh, the even ones have an extra step. So let's look at, uh, let's do the fifth root of, so let's do uh, 3x plus one to the 21st, 2x minus six uh, to the eighth, and 3x plus seven to the 17th, because why not? Okay. So again, same idea. I'm gonna look at each one of these as sort of its own factor and break it apart into the highest multiple of the root value, highest multiple of five in this case, that I can, plus whatever extra there is. So I'm gonna have fifth root of, so here I'm gonna have 3x plus one to the 20th times 3x plus one to the first. Again, just writing the one there to make it clear, you don't have to. Uh, here I'm gonna have 2x minus six to the fifth, and then that will leave me with 2x minus six to the third. And then here I'm gonna have 3x plus seven to the 15th, and 3x plus seven squared is left over, right? 15 plus two is 17, three plus eight is eight, uh, sorry, three plus five is eight, one plus 20 is 21, there we go. And write my square root bar, okay. And then, so that was this equivalent step, so the next one I'm gonna move all of the nice multiples into the front, make it its own root, and then have all the leftovers in the other root. So I'm gonna have fifth root of uh, 3x plus one to the 20th, 2x minus six to the fifth, and 3x plus seven to the 15th, times, I'll even do the root in the other color on this one, fifth root of what's left over. So I'm gonna have uh, 3x 
plus 1 to the 1, 2x minus 6 to the 3, and 3x plus 7 squared. Okay. And here, uh, I can now simplify out the fifth root. Um, so again, I want to divide, right? So I'm going to have 20 divided by 5, so that's 4. So I'm going to have 3x plus 1 to the fourth. 2x minus 6. So 5 and 5, that'll give me a 1. Again, I don't have to write that, but just to make it clear. And 3x plus 7. 15 over 5, so that'll be a 3 times. And then all of that stays the same. So fifth root, uh, 3x plus 1, 2x minus 6 cubed, uh, 3x plus 7 squared, and root. OK? So that's it. And again, um, from sort of here to here, that's where the if it were an even root, something else would happen sort of in between those two steps. But for right now, uh, with an odd root, that's all there is, OK? So this is really all there is to it. Um, usually, the hard part is getting it to the factor, to the type 1. Um, but once you have a type 1, then this is how you sort of go about it, right? So you do exactly these sort of first three steps to get it broken into the two pieces. If it's even, you have an extra step before you get down to your final result. If it's odd, you just go straight to the final result. That's it, OK? All right. So that is that. Um, make sure to watch the other video, um, probably in the next tile, if you're doing this embedded in Kronos. Um, make sure to watch the next video for the part two, the um, how to do this when you're looking at sort of you, the inverse function bit and how to deal with the even roots in particular. Um, so just as a quick sort of disclaimer, it might be that the type 1 practice tile is before that one, but you, you do need that one to, re, to do all of the type 1 practice. Um, and that's just because we need a little bit of the square root as an inverse information in order to do the evens for the other piece. Okay. So with that, we are all set.